The, the first part of a performance curve is going to be the head versus flow line or curve that you're going to see. And so for a centrifugal pump, it's going to look something similar to what you see on the diagram. The, the left curve or the vertical axis is typically head in feet or meters. And the horizontal axis is typically going to be your flow. And this is going to be in gallons per minute or uh, other flow measurement. And there's going to be a line that's defining how much head that pump is going to be generating at a particular flow rate. And that line is going to represent a specific impeller trim. So in this particular case, you can see that there's a 10-inch notation on the, on the curve, and that 10-inch represents a 10-inch impeller. And for this particular pump, the pump would operate uh, along this line at a given speed or RPM. You'll also have a second curve that gets presented for a pump, and that's going to be the efficiency curve. Now, the efficiency curve has to be plotted against a different axis. And so in, in this particular example, you'll notice that we've added a efficiency uh, axis on the right side of the chart, and that's in blue, and then we've added a curve that represents the pump efficiency. And so in this particular one, which is going to be the case for all centrifugal pumps, at very low flow rates, a centrifugal pump is very inefficient. As you start moving to the right of the curve, the efficiency is going to increase quite quickly until it hits a peak. And that peak is going is called the best efficiency point. And that best efficiency point is your ideal operating condition for a centrifugal pump to get the most efficiency, best reliability out of, out of that product. You can then typically operate the pump further to the right of the best efficiency point, but then the efficiency is going to begin to decline. And at some point, the pump manufacturer is going to limit the flow rate that this pump is um, allowed to operate at because your efficiency and your reliability will decline as you move too far to the right. Another characteristic of a performance curve is your power. And so this is typically presented in horsepower or kilowatts for, the, for a pump. And it's going to have to be plotted against a, a different axis as well. And in this case, you, you can see that the horsepower has been added as a, an example in red. And then finally, there's another characteristic called uh, NPSH required. Um, the industry is starting to convert this to NPSH3. Um, they mean the same thing when it comes to centrifugal pumps. Um, but, the, but you will, historically, the nomenclature has been NPSHR. Uh, we have another webinar that's going to be covering NPSH requirement um, in much more detail, but this is a characteristic of the pump and it's, it should be presented on a pump performance curve. And uh, we've added a separate chart here to depict how the pump operates from an NPSH required standpoint. So how do you actually read this curve? Well, uh, that's where I'm adding this green vertical line here to show how this particular uh, or how a performance curve for a centrifugal pump can be read and interpreted for a particular operating condition. And so when you're reading a centrifugal pump curve, you need to create a vertical line at a given flow rate, and then you can read all of the other characteristics of the pump's performance um, where that vertical line crosses the, the curve. And so in this particular example, we, the green vertical line has been added at 655 gallons per minute. And so once we've set that as, a, as the criteria, now you can follow that 
green line vertically until it crosses the head curve, the efficiency curve, the horsepower curve, and the NPSH required curve. And so in this case, where the green line crosses the head curve, you're going to learn or identify that this pump is designed to operate at 380 feet when it is generating 655 gallons per minute flow rate. Similarly, the pump's efficiency is going to be 73%, and so that appears to be very close to the pump's best efficiency point because that is right near the top of the efficiency curve. But at this particular operating point, it would be 73. And then if you go down across where the red line crosses, that red line represents the horsepower. And if you read that, it would be would indicate that this pump is going to require 86 horsepower. And then finally, down at the NPSH required curve, this pump would require 16.4 feet of head, um, suction head, to ensure it's not cavitating. And so this is how you're going to read um, a centrifugal pump performance curve. If you were wanting to determine the pump's performance at a different flow rate, you would simply go to that flow rate and create another vertical line and now read all of the characteristics of the curve. And just in general, if you move to the left, of a centrifugal pump curve, you're going to see higher heads and you'll see lower horsepower and in general you'll see lower NPSH requirement. Uh, depending on where you're at on the curve, the efficiency may get better or worse depending on whether you are to the left or right of that best efficiency point.